Hello technical knowledge seekers, hope you are doing well and as always if you are new to my channel I would humbly request you to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that you shall be able to see all engineering videos related to my channel. Ok, so today we are going to study about uh, thin walled pressure vessels, ok, these thin walled pressure vessels and our aim is to understand what kind of stresses are being developed in these thin walled pressure vessels, ok. So if you see in this picture, you will see a thin walled pressure vessel, basically you will see a, uh, uh, this, if you see this huge uh, gold loofer, this is a thin walled pressure vessel, a spherical vessels. Uh, tanks are basically uh, thin wall pressure vessels and uh, apart from this if you see this picture of these firemen with a hose in their hand and uh, pressure is being ejected at a very high velocity and okay so you can see this is also a pressure vessel okay but uh, uh, you cannot uh, confirm uh, which kind of a pressure vessel is because you know there are two types of pressure vessels in the real world okay one are the thin walled and other are the thick walled pressure vessels so you have to be very careful in selecting and answering what kind of pressure vessels are this okay so the answer to this question lies that uh, whenever a pressure vessel is being shown to you or it is being uh, uh, basically in front of you you have to ask basically uh, question like of uh, its dimensions okay so the main questions that you can ask is basically for this pressure vessel what is the basically the diameter of this pressure vessel and what is the thickness of the pressure vessel that is in front of you and if the ratio of diameter to thickness is greater than or equal to the value of 20 then remember this is a pressure vessel which will be called always called as uh, a thin walled pressure vessel okay so you must remember uh, this information okay uh, to clearly differentiate between a thin walled and a thick walled pressure vessel so this factor is very important okay another uh, picture you can see a jacketed pressure vessel is over there and uh, this is basically a, a trans alaskan pipeline showing you carrying crude oil okay so it can carry like 318 million liters of crude oil a day okay so this is a also a pressure vessel uh, you see this uh, Pepsi can okay this coca-cola can sorry if you look at this can this is definitely uh, if you look at the cross-section uh, this is also a pressure vessel okay and but uh, certainly for this uh, can this is going to be a thin walled pressure vessel because you can see the and feel the thickness is very very thin okay so you ne should not be sure of uh, a pressure vessel until unless you are basically able to uh, calculate this value uh, and if this value is uh, greater than or equal to 20 so you can rest assured that uh, this is always going to be a uh, basically a thin walled it is always going to be a thin walled this is always going to be a thin walled pressure vessel based on this empirical relation okay so uh, now once uh, this is being done uh, you can basically we can basically proceed further and uh, you can see in other pictures over here also of uh, pressure vessels okay we are basically interested in calculating uh, the stresses that are being generated in uh, our pressure vessel uh, as a result of the uh, pressure that is ba basically being induced into uh, the pressure vessel okay what kind of stresses that are generated which are basically critical to the integrity of the pressure vessel okay so if you look at it over here we have basically got uh, a cylindrical pressure vessel there it is usually called as in the industry as bullets okay okay horizontal bullets okay so when you look at this uh, uh, pressure vessel over here you see basically our uh, aim is to calculate the hoop uh, circumferential stresses for thin walled cylinders okay for thin walled uh, pressure vessels okay uh, so if you look at it over here we take basically this pressure vessel is made up of many uh, shell plates which are being welded together so if we take basically uh, one half uh, or two halves of this uh, uh, thin walled uh, thin plates okay over here okay and if uh, we basically know that this pressure vessel on inside there is a there is a pressure p okay and uh, along the these uh, if you look at the uh, thickness or walls of this uh, pressure vessel there is basically uh, uh, 
force F by 2 being induced into it ok. So, the point is this because of this pressure there will be some reactions generated also and these reactions will be F by 2 and F by 2 ok. Uh, the reason being this that uh, uh, half the reactions will be generated over here and half the reaction will be of uh, generated F and F by 2 F will basically be called as total added up it will give you uh, a reaction force F ok. The reason being is that uh, this internal pressure wants to basically open up or uh, rupture this uh, pressure vessel this P. But uh, since uh, these walls if you look at it uh, thickness these wall thicknesses are basically being welded with the other plates and they are basically uh, trying to ensure the integrity of this pressure vessel. So, if we perform the force summation of this along the x axis we will see these two forces they are along the negative x axis. So, we write minus 2 f by 2 uh, f by 2 and f by 2. So, it becomes minus 2 f by 2 and if we see uh, there will be another uh, uh, basically horizontal force which is because of the internal fluid pressure P and uh, if you look uh, there is going to be an area also being generated if uh, because of this uh, two shells joined together it will be R plus R. So, it will be 2 R and uh, for area I need another uh, dimension and that is basically the thickness of this uh, uh, pressure vessel the, which is called as dx ok. Thickness of this uh, basically uh, pressure vessel along the x axis is called as dx. So, we when we calculate it we will be able to get the, uh, the force F ok. The force F being generated as a result of this pressure P which is 2 P R D X. ok. Now, we are also going to be interested in basically uh, the area, the area of this pressure vessel ok. The area if you look at it, it will be basically the thickness of this uh, wall of the uh, plate of the pressure vessel and uh, the thickness T ok. So, if you add T and T you will get 2 T and again uh, the basically uh, the, other, the other dimension of the area is basically T x ok. So, T plus T is 2 T into T x ok. This is the area and this is the force. We know stress is always equal to force per unit area. So, if we divide and this basically stress is since it is acting along the circumference. So, it is called as the uh, circumferential stress or it is called as the hoop stress ok. These two are the names. So, dividing force equation 1 by equation 2 will give me 2 P R D X and of divided by 2 T D X. So, if we basically cut uh, D X and D X and 2 and 2 we are left with the value of P R upon T. So, this is basically the hoop stress that is generated in a thin walled pressure vessel ok. Now, if we go uh, there is another stress which are acting along the axis of this horizontal uh, bullet uh, pressure vessel ok uh, which will be acting that is will be called as the longitudinal stress and or it is also being termed as the axial stress. So, if you look at it this is our uh, showing you this is our showing you the hoop stress ok uh, which is P R upon T now our circumvention. Now, we are interested in calculating the axial or longitudinal stress ok. So, if we cut the uh, our pressure vessel uh, vertically ok and basically remove the other side of the pressure vessel. So, so, you will see this is going to be the pressure of the fluid acting on the uh, walls of the pressure vessel ok. This is the fluid pressure or gas pressure whatever it is ok. Uh, so, this pressure will always be equals to uh, force it is force uh, pressure P multiplied by the area of this pressure vessel which is pi r square ok. So, if you look at it, it will be basically going to be equal to it is going to be equal to the pressure P of the fluid into the area which is the pi r square. This area if you look at it this is going to be pi r square since this is circular ok. Now, there will be another uh, uh, force generated because of uh, this because we have cut this pressure vessel into two. So, there will be a reacting force also being generated along the uh, walls of the uh, this pressure vessel. This uh, basically resisting force which is being generated is basically can be calculated as F equals to sigma 2 into A ok. So, our uh, aim is to calculate this sigma 2 ok and the area because of this uh, resisting force it will be basically uh, 2 pi r up into t 2 pi r into t why because if this is uh, 
uh, cylindrical uh, it is a circular if we open this pressure vessel we will get uh, the circumferential area as 2 pi r and the thickness of this uh, these walls and the thickness of this walls is already been told to you as t okay so it becomes as f equals to sigma 2 to sigma 2 into 2 pi r t now again if we divide uh, basically uh, the uh, p pi r square divided by uh, 2 pi r t if we divide these two quantities we will be able to get our axial and longitudinal stress which is pr upon 2t okay so this is the axial or longitudinal stress along the axis of the pressure vessel this it will always be acting like this it will always be acting along the axis it will always be acting along the axis and what about the other one uh, the circumferential stresses will always be acting uh, li along the circumference you can see they are also called as tangential stresses because they will be acting tangential to the surface so this is how you calculate uh, the stresses along in a thin wall cylinder so we have calculated the hoop stresses and we have calculated the longitudinal stress let's uh, these two stresses if we basically uh, can be uh, put a, a stress element on this if we put a stress element on this uh, pressure vessel we can basically represent it like this okay uh, this is sigma 1 okay pr upon t which is acting along the circumference and these uh, sigma 2 are basically the longitudinal uh, stresses which is pr upon 2t and sigma 1 is pr upon t okay so and this we could show it like this uh, along the uh, stress as a stress element okay these are the stress element is being shown okay so but we will not store it there is another type of pressure vessel which are called as spherical pressure vessels used to store uh, chemicals okay pressurized and hazardous chemicals and uh, if we cut uh, this pressure vessel uh, vertically okay and remove the other side so we can have this uh, pressure being generated as a result of the fluid the white lines but along the white lines whenever we cut there will be also uh, reaction forces being also generated and it is similar to the uh, computation of uh, uh, the calculation of the lo axial or longitudinal stress for thin walled uh, horizontal uh, bullets okay we will also have the same relation uh, sigma 2 equals to pr upon 2t uh, for these spherical pressure vessels also okay so we can have, we will have the same we can exactly compute the way we did for these horizontal bullets uh, axial stress calculation sigma 2 is equals to pr upon 2t okay remember where r is the radius and t is the wall thickness okay so this is uh, i hope uh, you have understood uh, the stress calculus calculations for thin walled uh, pressure vessels thank you very much and you have a good day bye